This week on TGC News, Taurus jumps into the micro pistol game, the LVOA has another new version, and gun tubers get demonetized. Wooks makes high-performance outdoor gear with class. Whether you're in need of a chassis like the Furiosa, which merges beauty and functionality, or maybe you want a blade dripping with style and made from Rock 62 steel, or maybe you need to do some serious chopping with one of their axes, Wooks offers some of the best crafted outdoor gear in the world. And now you can use our promo code TGC15 to get 15% off your order from today until May 31st over at Wooks store.com that's tgc15 at wookstore.com welcome back to another episode of the gun collective news the only gun news show that covers things you actually care about my name is john Patton. before we get cracking the comment period is now open for the incomplete firearm proposed rule by atf and you guys need to hammer them with good effective comments Go check out my video on that topic for more info and to get to the comment section. Now, how about some news? First up this week, another challenger has entered the micro compact, decent capacity space, and it's the cheapest one yet. For reference, this market sector has guns like the P365, the Shield Plus from Smith & Wesson, the Ruger Max 9, and now Taurus has an offering. It's called the GX4, and on first glance, it's got a lot going for it. Just like the others in this sector, it's a striker-fired 9mm. The barrel length comes in at 3.06 inches, otherwise known as 3 inches. Overall size-wise, it's very similar to the other guys, about 6 inches in overall length, about 4.5 inches tall. It's even about the same width. They all vary just slightly. The magazine capacity on this one comes in at 11 rounds without any extensions. The gun is shipping with two of those 11 round mags and they have flat base pads on them. 13 round mags can be bought, but they don't ship with the gun for some odd reason. I think the smart thing is one flat, one extended, but whatever, what do I know? Beyond that, there is a flat face trigger, semi-aggressive texture around the grip, and it comes with an interchangeable backstrap. It also has an internal chassis system that houses the fire control group. Taurus says this gives them a 25% reduction in parts from the G3C, which is new like last year. That's cool. That chassis idea seems to be increasingly popular these days. We've seen it in a lot of iterations of that. The MSRP on this gun lands at $392.42, which is the cheapest of this style of gun yet. In my opinion, this is a super smart offering. No, it doesn't have the optic cut like we all want, and flat base pads on the mags is lame, but at the same time, I have one of these in hand. It's literally sitting right there, and it's really not a cheap feeling gun. It's surprising. This thing has the best trigger I've ever felt on any Taurus, and if that's all we get out of it, it's probably a win. I'm curious to know what you guys are thinking on this one. I posted a video on YouTube and Instagram, a little teaser, and there was a lot of comments, both positive and negative. Has your opinion on Taurus changed like mine has over the last couple of years? Is this one that you would consider? Sound off and let's talk about it in the comments. We have a few more new guns to cover this week. Beretta is showing off a new over under and it's really light. In fact, They've named it the Ultra Legero or Ultralight. <laughs> Long story shorter, they've pulled a ton of material out of the gun in various places like the stock, barrels, trigger, and forend, which equates to a gun that weighs about 14 ounces less than a standard Beretta 690. When you are carrying a gun around in a field all day, hunting birds, that can be a big deal. It's almost a pound of weight pulled out. You can get it with four different barrel lengths and a few other options, but all in all, it's a super nice Beretta over under that's gone on a diet. The unfortunate thing is that there is no pricing yet because it's not available in the US yet. Feel free to harass Beretta USA if you want them to start importing these. Moving on from there, Zero Delta has released a new version of the infamous LVOA rifle. This one is called the Ready Series 1776 inch. LVOA rifle. They put the inch sign in the name. The standout features are going to be the Mission First Tactical Furniture, the Ambi Bolt release, and the 17.76 inch rail with 
that notch in it, sort of like a mouth. When the Warsport LVOA first came out about five or six years ago, it was kind of controversial. The gun retailed for around $3,000, was built like a tank, and had the super unique rail on it. It was actually a really nice gun. LVOA stood for Low Visibility Operation Applications. Here we are years later with Warsport out of business and bought by Zero Delta, and a rifle that retails for half of that original price at $14.99 and just comes across as any old AR. I'm sure it's a good rifle because Zero Delta doesn't make crap, but I just wish the LVOA name really still meant something. And another new gun, sort of. This one is from a company called Ideal Conceal, and quite frankly, I don't think you're gonna wanna buy this one. Originally, this quote-unquote cell phone-shaped gun was chambered in 380. It's essentially a double barrel that folds up to be a rectangle shape. And now they're going to be offering it in nine millimeter. It took literally years for the 380 version to hit the market. They were taking money the whole time. It was really shady the way they did it. And I'm sure the nine version won't take that long, but the pricing alone is enough to make your stomach turn. You can pre-order the 380 version for 550, 550 bucks right now, which is a lot of money for a 380 with two shots. And the nines price? $795, just shy of 800 bucks for two rounds of nine mil. Ouch. I'll let you guys fire off in the comments what you think about that sort of thing. Is the potential concealment worth that price? In other news this week, Ian from Forgotten Weapons has announced a new book called Pistols of the Warlords. For those of you that are unaware, Ian not only has incredible knowledge of old guns, but he also started a publishing company with a few buddies a few years back to keep this knowledge available to the public. We covered that when it happened. That being said, this new book is a slight departure from a straight up reference book because the guns covered here have so little data about them, they formatted the book a little bit differently. They kind of had to. It's a blend between a reference book with the info that they were able to obtain and a coffee table sort of, ooh, look at that weird gun type book. James Rupley, who does all the photography for the Headstamp publishing books, as well as the Vickers Guide books, tackled this one, and quite honestly, his work is gorgeous. That, that's worth it to me alone. They've launched the Kickstarter like they always do for their books, and this one has a goal of $100,000 off the bat. They've well surpassed that, and as of writing this episode, it's already approaching $775,000 pledged. It's amazing what happens when you do something that people truly want to see. I would not be surprised if this surpasses a million. There will be a link in the description to go check it out if you guys want to do that. We get nothing out of this, like mentioned, they didn't ask us to do this or anything. I just think it's important to support gun tubers doing good work. Sylvan Arms makes parts for your gun right here in the USA. Whether you're looking for a side folding adapter or maybe a flared magwell, or maybe something to shoot nine out of your standard AR lower. They've got you covered. Sylvan Arms is an affordable alternative to many popular parts on the market right now. And to make it more affordable, use our code TGC10 over at sylvanarms.com to get 10% off your entire order. Now, instead of GunTuber of the week this time, we have some less great news. The demonetization train started rolling again and it ran over some gun tubers, and sort of an anomaly. In case you have no idea what I'm talking about, one of the ways that gun channels stay afloat is by getting a cut of the ad revenue generated through YouTube on their videos. When a channel gets demonetized, or the ads basically get shut off, a couple of things happen. Number one, they have zero way to contact YouTube directly anymore, and YouTube stops promoting the channel altogether which absolutely crushes the viewership. It's basically like shutting the thing off or like closing the tap. For some channels, this means the door is closed for good, and for others, it could mean things get really, really difficult really fast. Now, this can happen for a variety of reasons. There's lots of reasons why this could happen, sometimes legit, sometimes not, but most of the time, it's nonsense. So I'm gonna share the channels with you, and I want you to go subscribe if you're not, already subscribe to these guys and try to support them through this crap that they're dealing with. I need you guys to go check out Rito May, Guns Out TV, Golden Web, 
And for some weird reason, Talon Sai also got hit. Now, he actually stripped his main channel, which got demonetized here. He stripped it of all the gun content a long while back and started Sunday Gun Day because this happened to him before. But they hit him again over guns that aren't in the videos. Super strange stuff. Anyway, I think it's important to spread that info whenever possible. So please go check out those channels. The only thing that stops a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. This week, our good guy with a gun is unnamed. It was Saturday, May 15th, 2021, at about 7.30 in the morning in Fort Smith, Arkansas, when a 26-year-old man opened fire on his neighbors, demanding they come outside so he likely could do something horrible to them. He killed one resident who was 87 years old, a woman named Lois Hicks. While this was happening, another neighbor grabbed his own hunting rifle, found a stable shooting position, which you can see in the image, and was able to end the threat and therefore the shooter's life. Reports say that the shooter may have been dealing with PTSD, but it's unclear what's true about the guy just yet because this happened a week ago and we, we just don't know what's going on quite yet. I want to hear from you guys on this one. What would you do if you heard shooting outside your home? Drop your answers in the comments and let me know your thoughts. If you guys enjoyed this show and you want to see an ad-free version, check us out on floatplane.com. Go Subscribe over there, that'd be rad. And after you click the like button on this video, make sure you do that. Be sure to hit the secret affiliate link in the description. That'd be a massive help for us. And of course, don't forget to get subscribed for more gun news every single week. And as always, thank you all for watching. We will see you soon. Yep, it's over, but don't worry. You can click on the video up top to watch last week's show. And the one below that is the one that YouTube thinks you'll enjoy. Check them out and let me know what you think.